Hi, my name is Guido. Today we are going to create a collectible. Collectibles are used in almost any game for obtaining upgrades or resources. And in this video, I will show you how to make them. We are going to make it rotate. And as an example, we are going to give our character a power up. This way you will know how to add actions to the collectible that will trigger when we will pick it up. I've created a new third person project. I always prefer to categorize my project files. So for that, I'm going to create a new folder and rename it collectibles. Inside this folder, I'm going to create a new actor blueprint. Let's rename it to BP underscore collectible and open this new blueprint. Inside, we'll find the empty actor. We will need two things here. The first will be a static mesh. This mesh will be that what is visible to the player. To make this visible, let's add a cube. Now, since this cube is quite large, we are going to rescale it to 0.4. And since the mesh is not centered, we will drag across every axis to place it to the center. If you're going to use a different mesh, try and center it as well. We are going to make the object rotate, and if it's not centered, it will look a bit odd. The second thing we will need is a box collision. Make sure you have the actor selected and not the static mesh, otherwise the parent of the box collision will be the static mesh, and that's not what we want. The box collision is an invisible box that we can use to trigger when the player is overlapping it. When we place the actor in the world, you can see the size of the static mesh and the box collision around it. When we hit G, which will take us into game view, the box collision will disappear, and that's also how we see the actor when we are playing the game. Let's go back to the actor. We are going to check if the player is overlapping with the help of the box collision. So we are not going to need the collision from the static mesh. Select the static mesh and scroll down to the collision tab and set the collision preset to overlap all. Let's compile and save our actor and open the event graph. We can delete these two bottom ones. We won't be needing them. We are going to need the event begin play node. The first thing we are going to create is the system that will rotate the collectible. There are a couple ways of doing it, and in this tutorial I'm going to do this by creating a function that will add rotation to the actor and play this function on the loop. So on the left, hit the plus symbol next to functions, rename it to rotate and hit enter. Here we are inside the function and we can add the nodes that we need to make the actor rotate. Drag to the right from the rotate node and search for at local rotation and select the one that says default scene root. Right click on the delta rotation and select split structure pin. Let's change the zx to 0.5. Now go back to the event graph and from, from the begin play node, drag to the right and search for set timer by function name. The function we're going to trigger is our rotate function. As time, Type in 0 0.005 and we are going to loop this function. Now compile and save and let's test the rotation. If you want to make it rotate faster or slower, try changing the time variable. Now let's start diving into the collision box. So select the collision box and at the on component begin overlap event. What this would do is start running the code that we will add here uh, whenever the character overlaps the box. What we want is that the overlap event only works with our character and not with other actors. We can do that by selecting the other actor node, drag to the right and cast to our character blueprint. Now if something else will trigger the box collision, the cast will fail and the code won't run. In this tutorial, we are going to add two actions to the overlap event. The first will be an action and for us it will be the power up boost for the character. If you want to add a different action to the collectible, this is the place where you want to add that. And the second thing that we are going to trigger is that we will remove the actor from the world so we can't pick it up again. Let's find our character blueprint to add the power up function. Our power up will be a jump boost. We are going to create a new event for this. The reason why we aren't using a function is that we can't have a delay inside a function. And we will be needing some delay to change the jump height back to its original value after a couple of seconds. To create an event, right click and search for add custom event. Rename it to jump boost and hit enter. On the left is the character movement component and this component holds the value of the jump height. 
So to change it, we are going to need this component. Drag it onto the graph, drag to the right, and search for set jump Z velocity. The jump velocity is how high we can jump, and standard, it's set to 700. So let's double it to 1400. The next thing we need is a delay, and I'm going to set it to three seconds. I'm going to copy and paste the jump velocity and connect these two lines. Don't forget to change it back to 700. You can change these values to your liking to make your character jump higher or make the boost last longer by increasing the delay time. This is all we need for our jump boost. So compile and save and close the character blueprint. Inside the collectible blueprint, we've already created the cost of our character. So from the object reference, we can drag to the right and search for the event we've just created. And the last thing we will need to add is the destroy actor node. So the actor will be removed from the world. Let's compile and save and let's test our collectible. Our current jump height is 700. Let's collect our rotating box and our jump height is doubled and the collectible has been destroyed. That's all for this tutorial. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be notified when I'm uploading new tutorials. And do you want access to all the tutorial files? Support me on Patreon and there will be a link for every Unreal Engine 5 tutorial I've made. You can find the link to my Patreon in the description below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.